What's up, YouTube family? Lou here with another Godlike Collectibles video. Uh, just wanted to share a few things today. Um, kind of got inspired, actually, by um, the video the other day of um, the Mif Misfits, where you had um, them talking about autographs and showing some autographs off. I don't have a lot of autographs. Um, you know, I recently had gotten the Tony Oliva that I got picked up at um, Cooperstown. And um, then I have a couple autographs like uh, Dylan Car uh, Carlson and um, Jason Beeks from a game ball that I had gotten from Tampa. And they happened to be the players that were uh, used that, ga that game ball. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get their their um, autograph cards to go with it to display it. So it's kind of cool. So I have another game ball and I ended up getting another auto of one of the players that was involved in that game used ball as well. Um, so I wanted to show that off. And I also found a um, a hat that I have that has an autograph on it that I had stored away uh, years ago. And um, I remember my dad gave it to me. Um, him and my brother were at this batting cage in New York in the Bronx. And there was a player there. And my dad went and bought a hat at the batting cage and had him sign it. So I'll, I'll share that in a minute. But um, I started reflecting a lot on, um, you know, watching some videos lately, seeing people go through their collections, um, looking through their old stuff. And, you know, made me start looking, digging through my boxes and stuff like that. And, you know, I ended up finding some rookie cards of players that I forgot that I had because I had bought collections, you know, I had bought a collection a while back, about a year ago, maybe longer. Um, there was a guy that was selling off his grandfather's, um, his grandfather's collection of, and, and apparently all his vintage stuff was already taken away, but he had some modern stuff and the modern stuff, he was a, it looks like he was a set collector. And I bought like, I don't know, 22 boxes, um, you know, like some are long, some short. Um, but he had a bunch of cards. He was asking 180 for it. And he was like, yeah, people been trying to lowball me, this and the other. He was like, I'm willing to give it to you for 150 and this and that. And I was like, you know what, I'll take it. So I was looking through it, whatever, and I grabbed it. And um, I kind of put it away. Because I was like wrapped up in doing all my other stuff and going through some of the older cards I got. Now, I didn't really pay attention to a lot of the stuff that was in there. So I started going through it and checking it out and ended up finding some cool cards. And I wanted to share what rookies I ended up pulling out of there. Um, he has some Bowman Chrome, has some, you know, tops. Um, I think this is what, what year is this? 2021. So, but first, let me show you this old card that I found. Not old, but, you know, it's a it's a die cut of a Paul O'Neill. This looks so cool. You can see right through it. <laughs> I thought this was kind of cool. I found that in one of my boxes. But um, let me show you some of these rookies real quick. We got Bo Bichette, Future Stars. We got uh, Randy or or Rosarena, who I like a lot. And, um, you know, you got Jazz Chisholm. This is a rookie card. And what's cool is that as, as I was looking through these, you know, it kind of gave me that old feeling of back in the day when I was a kid and I was collecting the stars of my era when I was growing up. And now I'm seeing the stars of this era. And it's kind of like, oh, I found this Bo Bichette. And, oh, I found this you know, Jazz Chisholm and, you know, and like like Aaron Judge. I got this Aaron Judge card. Not a rookie card, but very cool card. Shohei Otani. Another cool card. And then started finding some more cool stuff. I found this Adolis Garcia rookie card. Um, then a couple of... of uh, uh, what do you call those? The tops, uh, all star rookies. You got the Ronald Acuna. This one's nice. 
the Juan Soto. Glaber Torres, who I like a lot. You know, as a Yankee fan, I'm, I really like him. So, another Aaron Judge. Then we got the uh, Ozzy Albies, Future Stars. And I and as I'm looking through these, I'm like, man, this is so cool. Like, finding all these, these stars, these young stars that I'm seeing today. And it kind of gave me that flashback. Like, you know, when I used to collect Mattingly and Boggs and... Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire and all the, the, the guys, Canseco from back in the day. Fernando Tatis. And then this was cool. This was a good, good find. Got Trophy Cup Otani pitching and a Trophy Cup Otani batting. So I thought these were so cool. And I was like, oh, man, I'm so happy that I found those. You know what I mean? Like... So cool. And then I got the Bowman Chromes. This is from 2017. Fernando Tatis Jr. We got another Jazz Chisholm. First Bowman. We got Glaber Torres. Max Freed. Austin Riley, Rafael Devers, and Juan Soto. So I thought these was cool, man, like to find these because it was kind of like, I don't want to say unexpected, but it was like, I didn't, it, it, it just was like, I, I forgot about them. You know, I put, put these, these sets away and I didn't even bother looking through them. And today I was just like moving stuff around and just trying to clear up some space. And then I was like sitting down, just looking through cards. And I started thinking about, you know, Orlando from Collector's Dream and how Mangini be doing his videos, just showing a bunch of cards. And, you know, he was showing the, the 76 tops the other day. And, you know, when I sat down, I started looking through these cards and started finding these things. I was like, oh, man, there was another collection I bought. And I found this inside of a box. I didn't even know I had it. I took it off the out the wrapper because the wrapper was kind of messed up. But these little mini 87 um, tops, I thought these were so cool. Look at that. Mattingly, you know what I mean? You got Horner. Who else? You got like Dale Murphy, Lee Smith, Hall of Famer. You know, Eric Davis. Just a, a a bunch of the stars from back in the day. Dave Parker was Cincinnati. You know what I mean? Like, when I started looking at all these cards, I was like, yo, these are so cool. These little little cards. But, um, yeah, man, look, Jim Rice, another Hall of Famer. And I was just looking through it, and I was just thinking about, you know, 87. Look, Kirby Puckett. And I was like, yo, these are so cool, man. I, I didn't even know I had these. They were in a box. And so it was nice to, like, take them out, look through them. I thought that was pretty cool. And um, 87 being one of the first sets I started collecting as a kid, you know, I thought it was cool. So let me show you this autograph card. So just a, a little recap. Um, on August 28th, I went to a, uh, a Phillies game, and they were playing against... Um, the Angels, you know, I wanted to see Ortani play. Uh, he did get hurt, so he couldn't pitch, but he did he did hit. He was batting, playing DH. So this one is labeled. You can see the pitcher was Taiwan Walker, and Louis Rangifo was the batter. Now, I haven't gotten a Rangifo auto yet. For some reason, his autos have been kind of, like, pricey. But I was able to get this beautiful Taiwan Walker um, auto and it's numbered to 99. My eyes are bad, so forgive me, but 85 of 99. And it is just a cool looking card, man. Super cool. It's not graded. You know what I mean? I, like I said, I wasn't going to always buy graded cards. 
But this is this is a great, great auto. Beautiful Sharpie or whatever. Like the blue, the, the blue color looks beautiful. This is just a, a great auto. I love it. So I'm going to be displaying that with the ball the way I'm doing with the other one that I have. So I thought this was a different way of collecting. You know what I mean? I thought it was cool. And um, so I picked that up. And what else? Oh, then I want to show you this. If anybody knows how to display hats, let me know. Because I would love to display this, but keep it like protected without getting dust on it and all that other stuff. But I got this um, Cleveland Indians hat, right? My dad bought this hat at a batting cage in the, in the Bronx. The name of the batting cage was um, Baseball Plus. They're not open. That was it was only open back in the day. And man, I must have been in my early twenties, maybe in my mid twenties. And um how you call it? Uh my dad goes into the batting cage with my brother. Yeah, I might have I might have been in my early twenties. Maybe late teens. Who the heck knows? I don't even remember how long this was, but it was a while back. So my dad goes in there. And sure enough, he's in there with my brother, and this guy goes up to my dad and is like, hey, you see that guy over there? That's Manny Ramirez. He said, what? He said, yeah, that's Manny Ramirez from the Indians. Because a lot of, if a lot of you know, he's from Washington Heights, and he played in the Bronx, um, and he grew up in New York and all this other stuff, and all of a sudden, my dad goes and buys the hat to get him order, to autograph it. So Manny comes out and he autographs the hat. So puts his number on there. He autographs it. And I never got it authenticated. I have shoved it in this bag so it wouldn't get destroyed and like dusty and all that to preserve the, the, the signature because he signed it in a pen. So I don't know. I would love to display it, but I don't know what to display it in. I was thinking about like those glass cases, you know, that they use for like footballs and stuff like that. But I don't know. Maybe there's other collectors out there that know what to do with this. Maybe they could give me a tip. You can leave a comment down below um, and just let me know. But it was cool because my dad saw him. And, and at that time, Manny was so young when he was with the Indians. And he went up to him and got his autograph, spoke to him for a little bit. And it was funny, my dad gave it to me and told me to, you know, hold on to it, whatever. And I kept it all these years. And when I moved out here to Delaware, you know, it was in my attic. I had it in a box in the attic. And one day I'm just like going through the boxes in the attic to see what I had in there, see what I was going to throw out, what I was going to keep. And I find the hat and I call my dad up. And I'm like, you're never going to believe what I found. He said, remember that Manny Ramirez autograph? And he goes, oh my God, yeah, this and the other. I said, I found it. He goes, oh, I'm so happy you found it. And I showed it to him on a, you know, doing like a a, um, a video chat with him. So he was super happy that um, that I still had it. So it was cool, you know, and, um, you know, to, to relive that moment, you know, with my dad and, and talking about the hat, how he got it. He likes to tell the story, how he went in there and he's, you know, Bat play in the batting cages with my brother and all this other stuff, so it was kind of cool to 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 kind of reminisce on that, you know, and and kind of share the story with him. But um, but yeah, man, it, it's it's kind of wild, you know, when when I'm looking through all these cards and I'm thinking about it, and you know, there was something that um, I was watching a a podcast the other day, and they were talking about, you know, are we purchasing the 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 grade of the card or or what is it the slab or the or the card and you know f for a while it, I I tell you I, I felt like I got addicted to the uh, whole PSA registry thing and trying to like get all these cards and I felt like I'm missing out on a lot of cool cards that I can get because I'm so worried about getting them graded and not realizing that some of my best stuff is raw. It's like, you know what I mean? And and to find all of these guys, it's like, man, I could get these graded. 
Like, I don't need to buy them graded. I have them. You know what I mean? And if I wanted to send them to SGC, I can. And um, and then some of the cars, I just want to keep them raw anyway. So I just started, like, thinking about it, man. I, I Looking at comparing the prices of what it costs certain cards to buy graded and what they cost raw is like man i could have bought for the cost of one graded card i could have bought like 10 regular cards you know what i mean like 10 raw cards and um you know i was like really focusing on what i should do moving forward you know should i continue the psa registry PSA set registry and stuff like that. So what I was thinking about doing is um, if I do decide to get like every Hall of Famer in a PSA, what I'm thinking about doing is depending on what it costs, um, depending on how much it costs to get it, uh, if it's like, like for example, there's, there's some Hall of Famers like a Mike Mussina that I could get a, a graded eight card for like 10 bucks, PSA rookie card for $10. So it makes sense to buy it like that, right? But like these other Hall of Famers that it's big money, like especially the vintage stuff, doesn't make sense to, to, you know, like when I started thinking about some of the vintage cars that I could buy in a better grade raw than me buying a low grade PSA, I was like, man, I'd rather have the better graded card. I mean, the better looking card. You know what I mean? Even though it's not graded, I could always send it to get graded. So there's been like a little bit of a mind shift of of my thought process, you know? And um, so moving forward, I think that's what I'm looking to do and really looking through my collection and looking through my cards, because I have boxes of cards here that I got to look through and really see what I want to keep raw, what I want to send to get graded. And, um, you know, I don't even think I want to do the whole PSA set registry anymore because I think it's just it becomes an addiction where you feel that you kind of like pass up cards from other grading companies. Because you feel like, oh, it has to be a PSA. And if it's not PSA, then I'm not going to get it. And I find that to be kind of crazy, you know. And I've been really thinking about it. I remember I was talking on the phone with James one day from Elite Hunters. And he mentioned to me, he was like, man, I don't care what grading company it is. Um, I just want the card. So as long as I could get the card, it doesn't matter who graded it. It could be GMA, BGS, BVG, PSA, it don't matter. <laughs> and uh, I started thinking about it. I was like, man, you know. And sometimes we get caught up in the in, in the hobby. Like, we get caught up in what everybody else is doing. And it's like, man, screw that. Like, you know, and I've always been the type of person that collects what I, I want to collect. You know, there's not a lot of people out there buying Vic Power cards, you know what I mean? Vintage cards. There's not a lot of people out there buying a bunch of Juan Gonzalez's cards. You know what I mean? These guys are not Hall of Famers, you know? You have a lot of guys that only collect Hall of Famers. Me, I collect players that I enjoy, players that have a special history that I that I like. You know, I saw Juan Gonzalez play, so I enjoyed him. Ivan Rodriguez, even though Rodriguez is a uh, Hall of Famer, but... I collect guys that I like, you know, Robbie Alomar, one of my favorite players, um, Don Mattingly, my favorite player. So these guys I collect, even though I know Don Mattingly is not a Hall of Famer and maybe will never get in, but that's my guy. And I'm going to keep collecting his cards, whether they're expensive or not. I don't care. And I like getting the different cards of his. But then I realized, you know, for the amount that I spend on a graded card of his, I can buy like five to ten other of his cards you know, raw. So that's what I'm looking to, to do. I ended up ordering like a hundred, um, one touch, um, protectors that I'm going to use for a lot of these cards, like these rookie cards here that I found. These, these are awesome. You know, Juan Soto and 
Tatis, Otani. These are these are Ota like when I saw these, I was like, man, I don't even care if they're graded or not. Like these just look so awesome. You know what I mean? The fact that I got both of them, I was like, yo, this is awesome. Now I hope he's able to pitch again. You know what I mean? I don't know if he will, but um, yeah, man. So that that's just me talking and just <laughs> speaking my mind, I guess. You know, it was just cool to, to to watch some of these guys go through their collections, like Orlando and Mangini, and these guys talking about all these different cards and showing their cards. And I'm like, man, sometimes you know when life is going nuts and you're thinking about all these things going on in your life, it's nice to just sit down and unwind and just look at some cards. And it kind of takes you to that day when you were a kid collecting and, and watching these players, you start thinking of memories of watching these players play. So I thought that was pretty cool. So, you know, I'm, enough of me rambling. I know it's been like 20 minutes already, but just wanted to share with you my thoughts, share some cool cards that I found, show you my new Taiwan Walker uh, Auto and uh, my Manny Ramirez uh, autograph hat. So I'll see you on the next one. Take care. God bless and be safe. Peace.